<laughs> Welcome everyone to a very wicked uh, podcast episode today. Da da da. <laughs> we have with us a graduate from the Victorian College of the Arts. While studying, she performed in Flora the Red Menace and on the town. Since graduating, she's featured in the concept recording for Scarlet, which we actually talked about on an earlier episode with the creators. Most recently, she's been seen in the Australian premiere of Cruel Intentions, the 90s musical, and Tick Tick Boom, a personal favourite. And her first lead role will be as the Wicked Witch of the West, Elphaba in Wicked. It's Sheridan Adams. Ah, hi. Thank you so much for jumping on. Oh, no, thank you for having me. I, I was just saying this is my first podcast, so I'm elated to be here. Oh, I'm so excited. That's so cool. And I'm, I apologise for my awful pun, but I had to do it. Oh, no, I use the pun all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you, I'm going to bet that when you got the announcement, you probably told your friends, oh, i got some wicked news to tell you. i got some wicked news. Oh, I was too busy, like, kind of just staring at them in silence, kind of seeing if they would get it before before I told them, if that oh, made sense. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of like rocked up to my mum's, mum and dad's house. I just looked at my mum and I wondered if I could tell her telepathically. She got, she got the vibe eventually, but That's yeah. That's so cool. You must have been elated. Oh yeah, it was, it's so hard. It's, it's one of the questions, right? Everyone's like, so what was it like? How do you feel? Blah, blah, mm. like, ah. And getting the news was not something I was actually prepared for because I didn't know I was, I mean, I knew I was being considered for, Alphabet in some description, right? I was like maybe a cover or maybe in the ensemble, um, but I had no idea that I was being considered so seriously for the role. Wow. So when I got the call and my agent said the words Alphabet, <laughs> it it was like what was like I fell into like a whole new reality, like a whole new chapter began in that moment, mm. um, and a chapter that I didn't know could exist. So yeah. it's pretty cool. And yeah. it's like I said before, it's your first like lead role as well. Which, I mean, congratulations. Yeah. What a role to have as your first lead role. I mean, come on. Thank you. Yeah. it's. I've always wanted to be a leading lady. I've always, I'm a singer actor. I love storytelling, especially through songs. I've, I've sung since I was a little girl. Um, and so I always knew kind of that's what I wanted to do in the industry. And I always thought, oh, you know, you have these preconceived ideas and notions that to be a lead or to be a leading lady, you have to go through this process. You have to start here and you have to work your way up. And so I never thought that this would happen, that it would just go straight to something as iconic and amazing as Alphaba. Mm. Um, and it's it's been a dream role since I was a little girl. So I feel very, very excited to be stepping straight into this lead role out of all of them. Yeah, yeah. Well, and on such a special year as well, because it's the 20th anniversary this year um, of Wicked. Um, well, yeah. I may as well, just if anyone's living under a rock and they don't know what Wicked is, um, it's obviously music and lyrics by Stephen Schwartz based on the novel mm -hmm. and then obviously the Wizard of Oz film. And it was um, it premiered on Broadway 2003. And then obviously we had um, our incomparable leads. I'm going to like, I should have, pre I know obviously their names is Adina Menzel and Christian Chenoweth. Yes. But as I was like, you could probably tell I was stalling while I locked them in my mind. <laughs> But that is who obviously. Adele premiered. Dazeem. You just don't want an Adele Dazeem yeah. moment. Adele <laughs> Dazeem. I'm so tall. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it obviously follows your character, Elphaba, and your it's your perspective of the story and your relationship with Galinda as you battle against love interests, the wizard's corrupt government, and then you being painted as the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah, and we get to explore, is she really wicked? Yeah. Which, you know, I let audience members and everyone kind of come to their own conclusion about that. But it's it's such a beautiful story. Um, and it's so smart. I don't think there are many um, pieces of art or books or novels that kind of have taken something so iconic and loved as like something like The Wizard of Oz mm. and then given you a completely new perspective. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it feels really awesome to also be in it for the 20th anniversary. Yeah. Do you think that's where – I was going to ask you, where do you think it's, like, it's magic lies, you know? Like, what makes it this enduring musical that, you know, everyone just raves about and keeps coming back and it keeps selling out, you know, to audiences all the time? I think there are so many elements. I think – for me, I know what I fell in love with first and foremost was the music. That was my way in. Mm. For some other people, it will be the beautiful storyline. I think there aren't many stories that depict such beautiful female friendships. Yeah. Um, then for someone else, it'll be the incredible costumes and the incredible design and the set. And when they go see the musical, they've been just kind of 
taken to this brand new world. For someone else who's maybe a budding dancer, the choreography is absolutely stunning and unique and it's been so well thought through. They wanted to make sure that it, the movement was in a land of its own, like because we are in Oz, we're, yeah. we're somewhere magical and mystical. I think, and it sounds so cliche, but everyone that sees the show will fall in love with it and find its magic in another spot to someone else. Exactly, yeah. Um, and I think the themes keep it universal. I think the fact that it's set in Oz and you have a woman who's trying to find herself and find what it is to be herself in a world that does not accept her, those themes are universal. And in another 20 years, someone's still going to relate to that and understand mm. it. And they're um, obviously and like, they well, on the, I think it was the West End. It had um, the first um, uh, person of colour to play uh, Galinda as well. Um, which I think, I think it was either West End or Broadway. It was one of I the two. I think it was Broadway. I think yeah. that was Brittany Johnson. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. So yeah. they're still like, you know, making changes and, and add, it adds layers as well to it, you know, that just kind they're of keeps reading it. into it. Yeah. We had Lisa de Guzman, who was in the national tour, a beautiful, like a beautiful person of color. Then you have Alyssa Fox, who is now playing it on Broadway, also a person of color. Wow. Um, it's it's wonderful that they're taking the show in new directions and they're keeping up with, especially in Australia, mm. like keeping up with the times, diversifying our, our shows and making sure that people who watch these musicals can see themselves being represented on stage and and especially in such iconic roles. Exactly. Um, seeing themselves as Alphabar, that's a whole that's a whole new level. That's yeah. something that someone will take with them for the rest of their life. Yeah. Um, and I think we also have the first maybe African-American Nessa Rose also being played on Broadway. No way. Currently, oh, wow. I believe. Yeah, so it's it's pretty, pretty amazing. That's amazing. It's so good. And I think coming back to, like, the quality of Wicked, the, the reason I know it's a good show is because my dad, who is not a musical theatre person, he, like, gets dragged along to Wicked all the time. Well, not musical theatre all the time, loves Wicked. He loves it. And he, I remember the first time he left it, he was like, Galinda, not Galinda, Galinda. Oh. And it was just like, all right, yeah, that's it, that, that's it. And he loves it. It's the weirdest thing. So that's how I know it's a good show. Yeah, it's what everyone's been telling me. People have been saying, your life is going to change. And a huge part of that is because no matter who someone is, or what their hobbies are or their interests are, even if they're not into musical theatre like you've just said, Wicked is like a household name. Mm. And I'm so grateful that it does connect with so many people on so many levels. Yeah, yeah. And I, I wanted to talk about, obviously, um, your partner in crime for the whole, you know, journey, Courtney Monsma, to joining you as, uh, as Glinda, the good witch. So what's, um, what are you most excited about to work with Courtney? I adore Courtney. I really do. And I think I'm so grateful that I have such a, a special, beautiful person to share this journey with. Um, I'm actually an usher at Her Maj, uh, oh. Her Majesty's Theatre in Melbourne. Yeah. And I actually ushered Frozen when her and Gemma were up on that stage. No so every night I got to see them perform and gosh, just a testament to them. They are so consistent. Their performances were brilliant such talented ladies and I feel so lucky that I get to be performing alongside Courtney. Mm. It's kind of weird going from Usher in the back to yeah. on stage. Yeah, I was just going to say that her. must be surreal. Yeah, and she's been nothing but gracious and I feel like I've got a, like a bit of a big sister because she's been through so much. Like she's she's been in professional shows for quite a while now. She was a leading lady taking on Anna, like a huge role. Mm. And I just know that, that already she's given me some beautiful little nuggets of wisdom and if I ever have any questions or something's, I'm not sure about something or, you know, I'm at interviews and or I'm having, like, a, like I said, I'm having my first podcast now. I'm yeah. having so many firsts. I know Courtney's always kind of there to, to help me and support me. And I have like, like a partner in crime. Yeah. I'm not alone. I'm not alone in this journey. And I and think it, was, so it definitely relies on, well, the two of you, the show rests on both of your shoulders, really. Not, not one more than the other, I'd say. Yeah, it's about both. It's about both witches. And I think that's where the heart and the beauty in the show does lie. I know Stephen and Winnie were speaking about that when they were writing Wicked. The magic was there whenever there was Glinda and Alphaba. Mm. And they ended up kind of seeing that in audiences and they saw those in the readings. And then they were like, oh, we need to base this show around these two women because that's who people connect with. Yeah. Yeah, 100% agree. 
Um, I was going to ask you something about Courtney. Now, oh, that's what I was going to ask you. Um, so you, um, when it was announced that both of you were, you know, Alpha Burn Glinda, you did your little um, uh, the media outlet at Sydney, and I yes. want I was wondering what was going through your head the first time you sung Define Gravity to like you know a media audience. That is the best question, and I haven't yet been asked that. Okay. Actually. Um. It, there were so many things, Justin. <laughs> so you, you're standing there in a, a sunlit room with, like, general public and journalists and cameras everywhere and all of these people who have hired you that you really, really want to impress. Um, so you have that kind of slight fear. But I think when I was up there, I just made sure that I was somewhat, as much as I could be, Elphaba. I was trying to tell her story, although, you know, minus the costume and the set and all the, you know, the hour before that, that is act one, act one. Yeah. Um, so I was trying to make sure that defying gravity was what I was thinking about, but of course you have a couple things that come into play. I know my yeah. partner was to my right and he hears me sing this song all the time. Like when I'm rehearsing at home in my study and I remember I, I sung, so if you care to find me, look to the Western sky. And I was looking and I just saw his face completely shift. Oh, in, in in beautiful like awe and adoration and I was like I can't look at you anymore I have to I have to I have to move along and I was so close to cracking Justin oh, wow. to crying <gasps> my mum and my dad were also in the audience so yeah. I was very grateful that I had that support but I thought no no we cannot cry this is not about me this is about the show it's about the character yeah um so that was in my mind keep it together hold it together no crying your dreams are coming true but we're not getting wrapped up in that yeah. <laughs> um and yeah, also performing for media conferences, they're kind of a, a performance in their own realm. Yeah, they really people are. People don't always talk yeah. about like, I, I, I went to university, I trained to like rehearse for six weeks, have a tech, practice, 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 and you put on this full fledged show. Mm. Um, so performing in those kind of smaller spaces, it, it's, it's a beautiful learning experience. Um, and it's it's mainly there to give everyone a little bit of a taster of the show. So hopefully, I did a good enough job. So oh, I think you smashed of, it to say people can come and say. buy tickets and then come see the full thing, the yeah. full thing that I'm excited to rehearse and present. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm wondering as well because obviously, you know, it's the 20th production of the show, um, and I, don't, I, I know you.